Welcome to the podcast for the West Side Church of Christ that meets in Killeen, Texas. Today we bring you another practical lesson from God's inspired word, the Bible. Good morning, everyone. The lesson this morning is about remembering. Who remembers the Alamo? None of you were there. How can you possibly remember the Alamo? We do because there's a memorial. We do because it was talked about. It was, in fact, shouted back in 1836 as they were trying to get themselves energized and and move to do something about their situation. I don't think there's anyone in here that remembers Pearl Harbor either, 1941. If you don't have to raise your hand if, if you do, but I don't think so. But the same thing, this event happened, the United States was attacked, and we would say for years, remember Pearl Harbor, remember what happened that day, which President Roosevelt said a day which would live in infamy, and it still does, all these years later. Or what about most recently, September 11, 2001? Most of us remember that day. I can still tell you exactly what I was doing when I first saw those events unfold or begin to unfold. And today, of course, or this weekend, is what we call Memorial Day. It's a day of memorial, a day of remembrance, specifically designed in the United States for us to remember those who have given their lives in service, who have died. And it should be a sobering Kind of time. Now we get extra time off, and often, as you can tell, people are traveling and taking advantage of those things, and and that's great. That's fine. That's what we ought to do. Family is important. It's one of the reasons those people gave their lives, right? And the truth is, memorials are important to us. They're very important. God established a number of memorials throughout. The years. I mean, I mean, who can forget, right? When the people crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. Remember what Joshua said. This is Joshua chapter four. He said, "I want twelve, one leader from every tribe to pick up a stone as we crossed over." What What were they to do with it? They were to set it up in this in this sort of pile, this altar, as a memorial to remind them. And Joshua said, "We're putting this thing here so that." Later on, when your grandkids go, what is this thing? You'll tell them what happened here on this day. You'll remind them of the things that went on. You'll remind them about God. And who can forget this altar that was built some years later? This is Joshua 22. Remember how... The uh, Gadites, the Reubenites, and some of the the tribe of Manasseh, they they decided to take land on the eastern side of the Jordan River. And Moses said, okay. And then they went to fight. They went to conquer the rest of the land of Canaan. And Moses and Joshua said, you guys have to go. So they did. The men went to fight. But when they came back, when the war was over, they came back and they built this huge altar. And this is what happens when you don't communicate well. The other people, the other Israelites, went, whoa, what are these guys doing? They're building an altar. They're going to worship God. They're going to offer sacrifices. And they got an army together. And then they went right over to this place. And they were going to fight with their brothers. Because they were denying God, or so they thought. Well, the, the, the other tribes, Reuben, Gad, and half-tribe of Manasseh, said, whoa, wait a minute, that's not at all what we're doing. We're building this thing so that you don't forget that we're part of you. This is a, a memorial. So understandings can happen. And of course, who can forget the Passover, right? In fact, let's read in Leviticus. Leviticus, or I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 12. We'll read the original uh, offering of this that God made. So, of course, remember the history. Israel's in slavery. The plagues have been coming. And this is the, the beginning of the tenth plague. So God gives Israel this way to escape the tenth plague. 
So all these plagues have been happening. Some happen only on the Egyptians. Some have kind of happened to everybody. This one's going to happen to everybody unless you do hear what God said. Of course, there's a ton of lessons here. But this is meant to be a memorial. So even as God told them what to do, He also said, I want you to do this every year to remember this particular event. So uh, Exodus 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. It's kind of important. Right? We celebrate New Year's, right? To them, this marks the beginning of their new existence. Well, tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of the month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each uh, can eat. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. And anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you. When I strike Uh, when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. And so, they didn't always do this, but they tried. And of course, today, we have the Lord's Supper. We just talked about it, observed it, thought about it. We always spend a good deal of time thinking about what that means. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. And Paul's discussing the partaking of the Lord's Supper and some of the, uh, the, the ideas here. But here he tells us exactly what it is and what it's meant to do. Verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is My body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. In the same way also, He took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in My blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of Me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. And of course, Paul has some other commentary to make there. In fact, that they were doing it wrong, and they needed to correct that in a number of ways. So, memorials are a thing. They're real. They're important. They're important to us. And, and you know, there are maybe too many of these things in some cases, but there are memorials for all sorts of things, all sorts of people. And what they do is they serve to make us remember something or someone or often it's what this person did or what the events were, right? But they're more than that. They're supposed to also get us thinking about what that means. So what do we do with the fact that so-and-so did this thing or that thing? What do we do with the fact that we're, we're remembering those who lost their lives in service of this country this weekend. Well, we're supposed to be thinking about things like why they did it. What values are important and good and right and so on. Why do we put a statue of anybody? Hopefully it's because they did something great. So... When we memorialize, we have Martin Luther King Day. Why? He was an imperfect man, like all these others. But we remember what he did, what he stood for, right? We have a mountain of presidents. We remember what they did, what they stood for, and on and on and on. 
We don't always get it right, but that's the idea. We have days set in place so that we don't forget, like, again, this weekend. But remember, it's not just about remembering the event. It's not just about saying, yes, that happened. Acknowledging that that happened or that that person did this thing. So when we think about the Lord's Supper, for example, we remember Jesus. We're told it proclaims His death till He comes. Other passages give us more insight. And again, the gentlemen that come up here and talk about it and do it give us a lot of those insights on a weekly basis about different things that we could be thinking of. And ultimately, though, what we're doing is reminding ourselves that not only is Jesus real, not only did He come and offer Himself as a sacrifice, Not only is his blood the thing that ushered in this new contract, as Stephen was saying today, this new covenant, but that what was it about? Why did he do it? And what does it mean for you? And what does it mean for me? We do this on a weekly basis. So it's not just about remembering who Jesus is and what he did. There's a lot more to it. Read with me in 2 Peter chapter 1. I love this passage because I kind of feel like as a preacher, this is kind of my job right here. Uh, there's a couple passages, you know, Paul tells Timothy, reprove, rebuke, exhort, fall along suffering, and preach the truth in season, out of season. I mean, by the way, these things are meant for all of us, but specifically if you're one who is in front of the group and teaching and so on, uh, you, we need to remember those things. But here's another one. Peter, writing to these churches, says in verse 12 of 2 Peter 1, Therefore I intend always to remind you of these qualities. Now he's just gotten through saying, you know, add your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, all those things. So he's referring to this sort of group of things, but that's representative of much more. So I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. And I will make every effort, so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. So Peter's writing this letter suggesting that I'm not going to be around too much longer, and I want to make sure you don't forget really important stuff. And that's what I do. That's what we do on a weekly basis, whether we're talking about observing this communion, this Lord's Supper, whether we're talking about singing these songs together. Think about the themes and ideas that are reiterated constantly in these songs, whether it's praying and or and or listening to the prayers again we are refreshing our minds and of course the lesson the bible classes these things yes we may learn new things but for many of us by and large we're being reminded of important things and that's what this lesson is and so there are i guess the point is there are a lot more things we need to remember than just jesus died for our sins and so on That's important. It's fundamental. Paul says, if he didn't do that and he wasn't raised, then this whole thing is a waste of time. Right? So we need to remember that there are a whole bunch of other things that we need to remember. There are things that we need to talk about and think about. And and so here's kind of an easy list of some of those things. Right? Turn to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Right? Like These are things that we do talk about pretty often. And the reason is because I think we have trouble doing them as often as we should, or being participating in these things as often as we should. This passage here, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, reminds us of several of these things, and just in a very quick way, right? Just here it is. There's a lot more explanation that's deserved here. But rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is you know, what we're supposed to be doing, right? Remember, we don't just remember Jesus' death and say, yes, Jesus died and he died for our sins. What does it mean? It means we have to live a life. It means we have to choose an allegiance. It means we have to follow Him. 
So it's much more than just acknowledging that he died and was raised even. Here's a few things, right? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, be thankful. I mean, think about what that means in practical terms as we go about our lives and things happen, good and bad. Easy, difficult. I don't see this passage saying unless, you know, things are tough or unless, except if something bad happened to you, you know, whatever, right? It just says this is what God's will is for us. That doesn't mean it's easy. Right? But we get we forget. That's the point. We forget when these things happen, when difficulties happen, our health gets bad, our loved one's health gets bad, someone dies, or we're looking at maybe a future that's going to be difficult for whatever reason. Uh, we lose our financial stability, yada, yada, yada. We could go on. Bad things happen. What do we do? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and be thankful. That doesn't mean we can't cry and be upset, and be sad. Those are all normal human conditions that we go through. But we can't live there. We can't dwell there. So we need to be reminded of these things. Because, you know, these things happen, right? Uh, kind of related to that, right? Cast your cares on Him. I know we talked about this one recently too. First Peter 5, verse 6. We just need to be reminded that we need to do these things. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. So God cares for us. We need to remember this. And again, sometimes in the middle of the good and the bad, right? When things are going great, we're just kind of going and maybe we're not thinking about God. This is why we need to be thankful always, I think. Because it always then returns us to the source of all of these blessings that we are enjoying at the current moment. If things are going great. Even when they're not. Have you noticed there's still a lot of other blessings going on, but we're kind of missing them and forgetting about them because we're focused on the bad. And again, I'm not saying that those things don't deserve attention. But we get lost. We forget. But we know. It's like Peter, right? We know this. We know this passage. We know this passage well. But in practical terms, as we go about our business, it, it sometimes just leaves our mind. We get distracted by the other. Again, good or bad. And so we need to be reminded. We need to remember that God's there. That He cares about us. You know, back to the Lord's Supper. Back to proclaiming His death. Back to His choice to die. Right? That's love. This is the plan God had in motion from the beginning to save everyone who wants to be saved. It's a pretty simple formula. And it required this tremendous act of love and tremendous amount of patience and mercy going on, going forward. We need to remember that He's there. We need to remember to study and to think about God's Word. Ephesians 5.17 Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That takes time and effort. You've got to put something there in order to really know not just about God, remember, but what God wants. Because, it's like these other memorials, it's not just about remembering that this event happened. It's about learning the lessons from it. It's about getting the message. It's about understanding what's expected from us because these things happen. So in 1836, they said, remember the Alamo, they expected that you would fight. And in 1941 and in 2001, there was a call to arms, right? And others, again, Martin Luther King, there's an expectation that you would recognize the, the changes that needed to happen continue to need to happen, so on, right? There's all of this. We think about the values that these um, soldiers and marines and sailors and coast guardsmen and reservists and everybody, what do they die for? Well, you know, we need to think about those things and then live those things out. We need to know what they are. So, there's a whole lot of things, right? Like kind of sitting here on the surface, I think that we need to remember. But there's, of course, a whole lot more things. Like I don't know how many slides I could make here and just say, but wait, there's more, right? Like the guy on TV. This is not it. Here's a bunch more that maybe go a little deeper. 
that we need to remember because Jesus did what he did, there's an expectation that we live a certain way. Again, to put it in Paul's terms in Romans chapter 6, that we choose to serve righteousness rather than wickedness. That we follow him. So one is to be holy and sober minded. Again, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. We looked at this verse a few weeks ago when we were talking about preparation and being prepared to be, uh, you know, a, whether you want to talk about a soldier, a disciple, a person of God, you've got to prepare yourself to do that. And that first phrase, right, prepare your minds for action, or some of your older translations say, gird up your loins, or one, one or two even see, prepare yourself like a man, like you're going to go do something really hard. Prepare your minds for action, and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as He who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. There's, a, there's an expectation that we are holy people, that we work, we seek to be holy. And again, there's a whole lesson sitting right here to talk about maybe how that comes about, but it is about devoting ourselves to God and understanding His will, etc. But holiness is, is a special state that only is achieved by following God. We need to be kind and respectful. You know, sometimes we forget that, right? We get angry. Things happen. People do foolish things. Like when they cut you off in the parking lot or on the highway. You know what Scripture says? Be kind and respectful. When your waiter doesn't bring your food the right way, be kind and respectful. When your boss gets on to you because you didn't make a mistake, but they think you did, be kind and respectful. When they're just mean because they're mean. Maybe they are bad. Again, I don't read the exceptions in here anywhere, right? We, as children of God, need to remember that we are to be kind and respectful. This passage, to me, just epitomizes that. We call it the golden rule. If only everyone... This is very idealistic. This is how I talk to my high school classes about certain individuals who are leaders sometimes, very, in, very idealistic. Wouldn't it be great if everyone would just get along? Well, yeah, but they're not. But as we're going to see, Scripture says, as much as depends on you, that better be the case. But think about this passage, whatever you wish that others would do to you, this is Matthew seven twelve. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. We all know it as, do unto others as they would do unto you, right? The old King James version of that. I don't know anyone who at, at, at the bottom line does not want to be treated with kindness and respect every time. When you make a mistake, how do you want to be treated? Right? And we don't always do this, unfortunately, but this is the goal, this is the ideal. And yes, if everyone would do this, the world would be a much better place. The fact is, not everyone wants to, and we make mistakes. But this is what we're shooting for, so we need to, again, recall this to mind, whatever you know, the immediate circumstance we find ourselves in. Again, when we're in plenty and in poverty and all in between, we need to remember that we need to be kind and respectful. So, you know, the janitor is a person, right? Not just the principal. That kind of thing works there as well. So we need to remember that. We need to remember this when we're arguing with someone about Scripture, that we need to be kind and respectful. We need to be right. Don't, give me, don't, don't misunderstand. But we need to be kind and respectful. If you've just peruse the internet, you see plenty of the opposite, unfortunately. And what it does, of course, is then it negatively impacts the rest of us. 
gives us a bad name. Christians look like mean people because some are. And so then we all get labeled this way. Wouldn't it be nice, idealistically, if we were all labeled for the nice people? But we're not. We need to understand that. We need to be pursuing peace. And that's Romans 12, verse 16. And this is where, again, the idea comes that as much as depends on you. Because the reality is, you can't always make that happen. There will be times and places and people who will not allow it. And you might have to fight. That's why we have war sometimes. Because you have to. I don't want to ever go to war, but sometimes we have to. I don't want to ever argue, but sometimes you have to. I don't want to ever fight, but sometimes you have to. But as much as depends on you, and this, let's go back to verse 16, Romans chapter 12, because this whole section kind of makes us think about this from a number of ways. Live in harmony with one another. Okay. Again, he's addressing Christians here. By the way, he's addressing Christians who are living in a community that's um, the capital of the Roman Empire and can be quite difficult. Right? Nowhere near as functionally nice as what we enjoy in America today. So live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as depends on you, live peaceably with all. And then Peter, in his writings, tells us to pursue peace. This is something you have to look for. Peace doesn't happen by accident. right? And peace doesn't happen by never acknowledging peace issues and difficulties either. It doesn't happen uh, by total compromise. Again, just ask the British in World War II, right? We'll just let Hitler do what he wants, and I'm sure it'll all be fine. Well, it wasn't. There's more stuff going on. But you can't always do that. Sometimes you just have to stand your ground and either take a lick in or maybe give one. But with kindness and respect, right, as much as depends on you, we pursue peace. But we don't always do that. We forget in the pursuit of other things that we're supposed to be pursuing peace. And again, never at the expense of truth and righteousness. That needs to be remembered as well. We need to be merciful and forgiving. This was one of the major complaints that Jesus had about the Pharisees, right? In Matthew 23, the whole chapter is devoted to Jesus just really ripping into the leadership. The people that should have known better. And he says all kinds of things about them. Calls them whitewashed tombs and you know dishes that are cleansed on the outside but not the inside. Those aren't the kind of dishes I want to use. But in verse 23, Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law like justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Now these were the leaders and teachers of Israel, the, 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 the educated ones, <clears throat> and they were getting the little things right but they forgot about the big things. And we can be there too. Little things matter. Let's not get that misunderstood either. Little things matter. What God tells us and shows us and demonstrates for us matters. But not at the expense of these other things. Of course, the other things shouldn't be at the expense of the little things, right? The justice and mercy and forgiveness shouldn't be at the expense of things like truth and so on. Justice either. And so we need to understand that mercy and forgiveness should go hand in hand with, with being a child of God, right? That's who we are. It's who we're supposed to be. It's who God is. If you've been with us on Wednesday nights, we keep coming back to this point that people have this idea that somehow God in the Old Testament was just mean and ornery and wanted to kill everybody. But no, actually, when you read what He actually said and did, is He said, please come back, please come back, please come back, please don't do this. Please stop sinning over and over and over again. And finally he said, you know what? i got to put a stop to it. And so he did. 
And then the next group, he did the same thing. And we read through the history of Israel how sometimes God just lavished everything on them, even when they were evil. And ultimately, he does exact justice too. But he asks and he offers mercy. And we have to accept. God's no different now. And again, why do we remember Jesus? Why do we remember his death? Why do we proclaim his death? Why do we think about the body, the blood, and these things? Jesus said it. So you don't forget. Do this in remembrance of me. We don't forget what he did. But remember, more importantly, what does that mean for me? Finally, we could talk about being loving. Again, I could just keep flipping slides here, right? And put more and more stuff. But I think, you know, we get a lot of the more surface kind of stuff. This is more deep stuff. We need to be loving. Go back to chapter 22 of Matthew, verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, you can, can you just see the Pharisees going, yep, you got those guys. And thinking like he's going to be on our side. And, and keep in mind, this is right before Jesus goes into the whole thing on the Pharisees that we just talked about. Okay, So he sort of puts the Sadducees in their place. And the Pharisees, this other sort of you know, religious political group, are like, alright, here we go. So they gather together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? This is a game they like to play. I think it's a human thing to do, to try to figure out what's the most important thing. I think we get from the next chapter that they're all important, right? The big things in our minds and the little things. Well, what is the great commandment? He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Makes sense. Goes back to Deuteronomy. By the way, further reinforcing the idea that God's the same God the whole time, right? This is always what God's wanted. Uh, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophet. This is what everything else hangs from, descends from. You cut one of these out, the rest falls apart. And other passages tell us you can't love God and not love your brother, <coughs> or vice versa. So, there's more, right? There's more deeper stuff. This is why one of the reasons why we do this all the time. We do this weekly, hopefully more than weekly as we can. This is why we try to figure out what God wants. This is why we try to put these things into practice. So remembering Jesus should call like these things to mind, right? When we're sitting here thinking through what words are offered by the, the person talking through the Lord's Supper, we should be thinking about more than just He died. More than just, I can get my sins forgiven. These are important. But it's more than that. We should be thinking about what it means. We should be thinking about what it means to live by the Word of God. Because memorials are just that, right? They can get old and tired and stale and like anything else, they'll fall apart or get torn down. We can't do that with God. We need to live by the Word. As it has ever been, it is about living by the Word of God. Turn to Psalm 119, if you would. Let's read just the beginning, the opening paragraph or so of that. The opening stanzas of this great psalm that is all about the Lord, the greatness of God, and following God. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies, who seek Him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in His ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your st statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. And he goes on in this line. David was not a perfect man any more than you or I are. And we need Jesus to ultimately correct the problem of sin. This is actually what we're studying in Romans right now in our Bible class. David already understood at least 
as far as this goes, that there's more that's happening here than just being a robot and following the rules. But David also understood that it is in that situation that true happiness and freedom arise. And that because God is who he is, David understood then there was a certain way to live. This hasn't changed. And so we need to think about these things. We need to remember these things. So again, as we're remembering, maybe you're remembering a loved one or a friend who died in service. Do it. Remember. But you don't just remember, oh, they died. You remember who they were. You remember what they did. And again, you remember why. When we remember Jesus, when we think about anything related to these scriptural things, we want to remember what it means for each of us then today. So let's, again, remember our fallen veterans and our loved ones and remember why they died. I remember some of the uh, ideals that the United States should put out there. Maybe used to, maybe can still, maybe still does, whatever. But more and more, of course, importantly, let's remember that with Jesus. What does he stand for? What did he do? What does he want from each one of us? How does he want us to live in his word? We're going to sing the song, I Surrender All. Because after all, that's what we need to do. All these songs have kind of led us in this direction to remember that he's the king He's the Lord, He's God, and He's asking us to do His will. And then there's a reward with grace and mercy attached, plenty of it, so that we can find peace with Him in eternal life. So think about those things. We're going to give you a moment to think. Again, if you're not a child of God, there are some steps. Again, there's some things that need to be done. You need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That seems rather uh, simplistic, but I think a lot of people try to be a child of God without actually believing this fact. And it makes it impossible. But there's more than that, right? There's actions, activities that take place. We talk about repenting of our sins, confessing Him as our Savior, being baptized is important. Again, read Romans chapter 6, how important that is. And fundamental to being able to walk with God. And then, and then we remember, right? We learn and we grow, as Stephen talked about, and we remember. Think about those things as we stand and as we sing. Thanks for listening. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have. If you are ever in the Colleen area, we'd certainly love to have you worship with us. You can learn more about us and our times of worship at westsidecolleen.com. Tune in next time and be sure to subscribe to our podcast. All together worthy, all together wonderful too.